Today we're going to talk about power enrichment, what you need to know about it. We're going to debunk some of the myths and we're going to kind of dive in and look at how we tune it. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and today we are talking about power enrichment, which is really kind of a misnomer. A lot of people think that, oh, power enrichment is where we use enrichment to make power in the top end, you know, the higher RPMs, where the, where the, the high peak of horsepower and torque is. But that's not true. The actual idea behind power enrichment is that you are enriching because you are making power. So ideally, we know that stoic is one lambda or, you know, 14.7 AFR for gasoline, things like that. That is the proper burn ratio for uh, the different fuels that we're using. So the idea behind it is, is why do we enrich whenever we get up into the higher RPMs or into the more boost area, higher boost area, things like that. That's because as things start happening faster, other things are happening to the engine, such as we start getting really high cylinder temperatures, and that's what leads to detonation, knock, all the bad things. And so what we're doing with power enrichment is we are flooding it with extra fuel to help cool off the motor whenever we are hitting those higher RPMs. So whenever we're idling around, it's not an issue. You know, we're, we're not ramming the pistons home fast enough that we really get that heat build up and just standard cooling through the water jackets and stuff generally is enough to keep the temperatures underneath control and we're also not running a lot of excess timing and things like that but as the rpm picks up as we are seeing more strokes and as we are advancing the uh the timing so that we are getting that ignition point perfect for driving the piston down into the crank and producing all that horsepower, that's when we start to have issues. And that's why you'll see a lot of different PE setups. Now back in the day, people kind of used and abused power enrichment to do a poor man's fuel tune on vehicles. And so back in the LSX days and, and back in the early VVE days before we figured out the virtual uh, volumetric efficiency tables and stuff like that, everybody abused these power enrichment tables. We don't do that anymore. We now have learned that there's no reason to do that. And the reasoning behind that is, is that from the factory, the PE tables tend to run a little bit rich. We can take a little bit of fueling out of there, which I'll show you how to do. It's a multiplier of your base fueling tables, but we can take a little bit of fueling out of there and still be well within the safe limits of what these motors can do. And in doing so, we will actually pick up some horsepower. We are being, we are sacrificing. We are being robbed of a little bit of horsepower on the side of safety with the factory power enrichments. But if you were to go in and look at a tune that has a flex fuel tune and a 93 or a, a, even an 87 or 89 octane uh, tune in it, you will notice that the numbers are different. And there's a reason behind that. That is because something like E85, something with a lot of ethanol content in it, actually burns cooler and is a great way of cooling down the intake chamber. So your power enrichment, you don't have to inject as much additional fuel to get that cooler intake temperature. Same thing, if you are doing something like methanol injection, you can also dial back your power enrichment a little bit. So whenever we shoot for, say, we'll talk in lambda from this point on, if you need to convert it over to AFR, but say if we're shooting for a 0.82 on a LSX motor, uh, whenever we are doing E85 or F methanol injection, we may be able to get away with a 0.86. Same ordeal on a direct injection engine. Those generally on gasoline are going to look for about a 0.85 on power uh, enrichment, and that's because injecting into the cylinder directly cools off the cylinder better than port injection fueling does. Uh, and so there's a lot of information out there, but just keep in mind that whenever we're injecting directly into the cylinder like that on direct injected engines, it's really good at, at kind of cooling everything off. And so we don't have to run as much power enrichment on those. So those are the things to keep in mind. The other things that we need to keep in mind is whenever we start doing things like adding forced induction to an engine that does not have forced induction. We may need to bring power enrichment on a little bit sooner or we may need to adjust the ramping rate. So we have power enrichment that sits as a modifier on the base, base fueling tables. Sorry, deal with me here. We have the base fueling tables as we know it, which are going to be your volumetric efficiency tables, your SD tables, then our, our MAF uh, commanded fuel, whatever is in control at that point in time. 
You've got your base tables. Then you have closed loop, which brings in your O2 sensors as the next level. And those are making minute adjustments based on the oxygen sensors and other things like that to say, okay, hey, we're just running a little bit leaner, a little bit rich. Then on top of that, we get into things like temperature adjustments or power enrichment, which is kind of the last level. Well, power enrichment, as I said, is based on whenever we get to certain RPMs or certain engine load threshold, threshold set points, then it starts ramping into power enrichment. So on top of it, we do have what's called a ramp rate, and that ramp rate determines how quickly we get up to the max level of power enrichment based on where we're at in the PE table. So these are things that we'll adjust whenever we get into forced induction, because say you're running a supercharger that's a root style that has a lot of low end you know, air that's moving in as soon as you get on the throttle, you might have to get into power enrichment a lot earlier, as opposed to something maybe a big uh, you know, twin or single turbo setup where you're not making boost until after say 3,500. There's no reason to be in power enrichment before you get to that, really that 3,000, 3,500 point. So every situation is a little bit different. It's, it's, this is gonna be kind of dependent on what you are running. There is the potential to make a little more power in it because it is rich from the factory, but this is not something that we want to get carried away with because it is there for the safety of the motor. It's really easy to get into uh, knock and detonation whenever we start making these adjustments. So we generally kind of pick a, a range of saying, hey, we've been shooting for 0.82 on here. We're going to drop this back to 0.85, run it from there. And as long as we're not having any kind of knock and we're not having to pull timing because of knock, uh, we'll, we'll just kind of leave it there. So it's a balancing act between power enrichment and uh, timing to make sure that we are not getting to that point where we get the early detonation and stuff like that. On the same thing though, as I said, if you've got your, tune, your timing dialed in real good, say you went down to the dyno, you maxed your timing out until you started losing power and then you set it back to that peak power point and you are seeing a little bit of detonation in some certain spots, you can bump up your power enrichment you know, a point or two and it will help to alleviate that because it'll help keep that cylinder temperature down. So as I said, there's a lot of moving parts in there, but the, the main takeaways are it's there for safety. You know, it, it, it's overly rich from the factory, so there's some adjustment to be made and it's different for the different style of fuels. But let's, uh, gra let's grab the laptop and I'll open up some maps. We'll, we'll kind of do the same thing that we did on the speed density uh, Histogram setup where I open up a uh, tune from like an 04, an 010, and, and a 15 or 16 or something like that. So uh, let's, let's do that now. Okay, I've got a uh, 2004 Silverado opened up. We're underneath engine fuel and then power and rich. Looking at kind of the, the basics here, this is about as simple as it gets. Our enables, the big thing is said this is something that we might need to adjust if we're starting to run forced induct induction on here where if we're looking at this, this thing kicks on at eight PSI. That's eight PSI if you take into account uh, barometrics. So if you were to take your 14 point, whatever your barometric is and subtract eight from that, that would give you an idea of what this is actually kicking on at. So this is not necessarily going into power enrichment at eight PSI boost. This is going into power enrichment at, uh, uh, you know, off the top of my head, six you know, probably around six vacuum, six inches of vacuum, give or take. That's just kind of loose math in there. But you have to remember a lot of times that these, uh, whenever you're talking about your map value, this is in relation to vacuum because unless it is a forced induction system from the factory, uh, everything's in vacuum because you're never going to go into positive airflow without boost. Uh, so, and then hysteresis, uh, this is something that kind of uh, is your differential from there saying that if we are uh, enabled at 55 kPa or in this case 8 psi the hysteresis is where we're going to disable and so in this case it's almost 1 psi hysteresis so if we are at 8 psi it enables power enrichment stays enabled until we get down to uh, 7.1 psi in, in this situation so and then of course the same ordeal with the torque whenever the desired torque is 100% uh, it's going to enable power uh, enrichment even if the map sensor is not in there. These are either ors generally, not requiring both, but one or the other can target it. So uh, then at the same ordeal, D RPM is kind of the big one. RPM will hold you out regardless of some of the other ones. Uh, so you may have to adjust your RPM down. See in this one, like on this 2004 Silverado, 5,000 RPM is pretty high for power enrichment. If I were to say turbocharge this, I would probably enable it uh, down to about 4,000 or 3,000 RPMs. 
and uh, I might even lower this delay because a two-second delay can, can shoot by really quick whenever you're forced induction. And then this is your ramp-in rate that we kind of talked about. And uh, this is just a multiplier. The smaller it is, the slower it, it ramps from whatever your base table is to your power enrichment uh, table is. Basically, and as I said, your power enrichment table is a multiplier on top of your base table. So this enrichment ramp-in is the rate at which it applies the multiplier. So... Uh, smaller the value it is, the slower, the bigger the value it is, the faster. So if you put this thing at a four, it would instantly kick on to power enrichment and it would cause issues. You want some ramp in, but you may need to adjust your ramp in based on your setup. Once again, forced induction where it's at. So as said on here, this is a multiplier and it has some information down here that tells you how the multipliers work. But generally, if you were to take, if you, if you think about, uh, your fueling goals where you're at 14.7 and less than that is, is rich, or if you're at one lambda and less than that is rich and you're trying to reach, and that's the cool thing about lambda, with it being one, if you're trying to reach 0.85, you know that you need to have, what, 15% less or 15% more fuel. So if you have a goal of 1.15, which we basically have in this, this right here and down the low end, uh, that is going to put you at 0.85 lambda. Then as you can see, uh, this actually leans out a little bit towards the top end. You're looking at, no, actually that would be getting richer at the top end because you're then looking for 30%. Uh, 30% 30, 30 fuel is what that takes. So you can basically take the one off and just look at what's past the decimal and that's the additional fuel, it's 30%. If you were to, for some crazy ass reason, uh, and I don't even know if you can put a negative in there. Uh, no, you can't. So zero is the lowest that you can go and uh, 28 doesn't make any sense either because if you put 28 in there it would be so freaking rich that you would have killed it a long time ago but let's jump over and let's look at how it's done on a uh a newer vehicle so let's look what we got what we got uh 2010 camaro let's jump underneath fuel and it's exactly the same except the only thing that's different really here is that you have a EQ ratio for gas and alcohol. So this is a flex fuel. And the thing about it is this works just like the flex fuel table where uh, your alcohol is probably going to be at 80% is what is considered this table. And then it blends between your gas table and your alcohol table based on your alcohol percentage. And it almost looks like these are probably the same. No, 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 they're different. So you can see here on this engine, down low, it starts out at 26% additional fuel, gets up into the 30s, and is, is running about 32% at the top end of the power band for this thing. Whereas on uh, E85, as I said, you don't require as much, and so it starts at 14%, and it maxes out about 30%, 33% at the top end, and that's pretty rich. That's probably more than you're gonna need on alcohol. So, as I said, these are tuned safe, but you can see that even on these maps, it shows that you don't need as much uh, in the E85 or the alcohol table as you do on the standard gas table because of the added benefits that we talked about that you get from uh, the uh, ethanol that's in the fuel, where it's better at cooling down the air charge and uh, the the and it doesn't burn as hot in the cylinder. So, and we will check out a uh, Gen 5 real quick. What we got? stock 2015 something not quite sure what this is but there's a lot more going on on this one uh, but a, most of it is the same ordeal the kind of cool thing is is we do have knock enrichment which will automatically adjust your power enrichment table if you get into knock uh, but same ordeal this is a little bit uh, more varied where we actually have a manifold temp uh, rows to deal with uh, as opposed to just a single engine RPM based map on there. But as you can see from the factory, this thing's pretty much straight across on uh, gasoline. We're starting at 22%. We're getting up to 30% at the top end of the power band. Let's look at the EQ ratio. 15% and it gets up to 17%, 19% at the top end. So once again, another prime example of not needing as much fueling on here. I would come in on this and probably take... Uh, three or four percent out and to do something like that man I would just grab this whole thing and then I would do subtract zero point or point zero three and that's going to be three percent and then you add that to the whole table and you've just taken three you know three percent out of the whole power enrichment table 
that works on all of them. So that would be kind of the same idea. If you wanted to start out, 3% is probably about as good as you're, as you're going to want to get. And then you can do the math, as I said, and look at it. If we're looking at a 0.85 on here at, at the max uh, in, the, in the power range, uh, where we're just wanting to take 15% out, we could actually come in here and, and just do a 1.15 and make it equal to that and set the power enrichment table completely flat. But I like to make adjustments to the table because there's kind of, you could be hurting yourself in the bottom end where you're making it a little bit too rich if you're able to get into power enrichment down there. Uh, as I said, our big one if we needed to shift this down is we would probably look at lowering our pedal requirements and then we could look at our RPM delay based on if we were running forced induction and say drop that down to maybe three grand because it might be a little bit better to get into power enrichment a little bit earlier. And then a lot of people will say that if you are tuning to disable power enrichment, do not do that. Listen, I'll explain to you why. That is because all of this sits on top of your base maps and that is where your commanded AFR, our EQ ratio comes from. So this will affect that commanded ratio. And the thing about it is, is if you disable this and you get a weird boost spike in the top end, you could blow your motor. Even if you aren't running force induction, if you disable power enrichment while you're tuning, you could cause issues. So even though we have ramp in rates and we are making adjustments to the fueling targets, that is seen in our commanded AFR or our commanded EQ. So any of these adjustments that this thing makes, we are going to be tuning against that. We should see whenever it goes to 0.85, our wideband should reflect 0.85 lambda at the same time. So for be safe, leave this stuff enabled, tune with power enrichment enabled. That way you're never running into the issues. And uh, you know, that's kind of the big stuff. As I said, there's not a lot to it. It's a little bit misconstrued where people think that you are making power off of power enrichment when you're actually robbing yourself of power, but you are making the power that you are making safer. So that's why it's important not to get too carried away on power enrichment. But hey, listen, I've got some stuff coming out this week. I've got lots of parts coming in for the uh, twin charge setup. So I'm hoping to get some videos out in the next week. Uh, maybe if I get enough parts in, we'll start doing the turbo mock-up. Uh, we'll start running the uh, oil lines on it. And I mean, it's just, this is going to unfold really fast where it's, I'm just going to get about five or six boxes in in the next three or four days. And all of a sudden we're going to start, you know, running this thing twin charged and then we'll unhook the supercharger, take it off and run this thing strictly off turbo. And we'll do a comparison between the three, how it is supercharged, how it is twin charged, how it is just turbo charged. So if you haven't already, go ahead and hit subscribe down there. If you got any questions on power enrichment, hit up the comments. Let me know. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hopefully I haven't been too uh, off into the weeds, but I've wanted to kind of clarify some of this stuff because there's a lot of false information or there's a lot of uh, kind of the wrong thought process of why we tune power enrichment. So I want to clear it up, but if any of it needs a little more clarification, just let me know down in the comments. And uh, if you like this video, throw a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch it. And as always, thanks for stopping by the garage.